that's accordingly, if we want to make ourselves comfortable. The fact I welcome you all to today's um, transport committee. As always, a little bit of housekeeping, uh, just to remind uh, everyone accordingly. If you do have your mobile phone with you, please can you make sure that it's uh, turned to silence so we won't interrupt today's proceedings. If um, I can also remember, remind anyone that is making a contribution to make sure to use the microphones accordingly so everyone can, can take on board uh, what is uh, being said uh, at uh, today's committee and during proceedings. We're not expecting uh, a fire alarm, so if uh, the very polite lady who does the voiceover when the alarm comes on uh, comes over the PA system, we do need to treat it as live accordingly and follow those instructions. And finally as well, uh, we do fully encourage anyone that wishes to film uh, or photograph proceedings. Our only request <coughs> is that because certain bits of equipment sometimes cause a bit of interference with the microphone system, if you can speak to our democratic services offices in advance, we can make sure everything is looked after accordingly. Um, before we get into the end of uh, the nuts and bolts of today's meeting, I was just going to take the opportunity just to highlight some of the stuff you might have seen in the press this morning, uh, some of the announcements that Transport for the North uh, have made about a £70 billion master plan that has been outlined for the North of England's transport network. I have to say, I'm really pleased and really proud that at this organisation we've had an integral role within Transport for the North and kind of designing uh, that master plan. And I'm particularly excited that very much towards the top of that list is um, that West East Crossrail for the North Northern Powerhouse Rail Network, of which uh, between Liverpool and Manchester a brand new high speed rail line linking onto HS2 is acknowledged as one of the very strongest and most important component parts. So I think very, very exciting news. Still a lot more to do, and we've got to see the whites of the government's eyes and the colour of their money to make sure that this happens. But please rest assured that we will not uh, rest until spades are in the ground, until it's constructed, and those brand new high speed services are operated in and out of the city and the wider region for the good of the whole country uh, into the future. Okay, moving on to the more formal business. Uh, first item is apologies for absence. Can I ask if we've had any apologies for absence? No, Chair, no apologies received. Okay, well, I'm aware that Councillor Ron Abbey, um, his wife is very poorly, so if we can sort of uh, send our best wishes to, to the family uh, accordingly. Uh, but also, Keith, you've got some notification? Two, two apologies, one from Councillor Murphy and Councillor Jackson. Okay, and also Dennis Baum, I believe, can't be with us as well. So if we can record all those apologies accordingly. Second item is just declaration of interest, and that's just for me to remind anyone if there's anything at this moment in time or at any stage in uh, the proceedings uh, that if there is anything they want to raise uh, and record accordingly, please make sure that we do that. Third item is the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, can I move that those uh, minutes from proceedings held on the 10th of January be approved as a correct record, <coughs> if that's agreed? Okay, well, I shall add my autograph accordingly to those. Then, um, item four is the emerging tunnel tolls for 1920. I believe Gary is going to be presenting. Thank you, Jane. Good afternoon, members. Uh, this report, much will be familiar with, is part of the annual toll setting process in line with the Tunnels Act 2004 and helps to feed into the budget report, which members are about to receive next item on the agenda. The report itself summarises the toll setting process, the background data that we've used in considering those issues, along with the solid toll levels as well, just for reference for members. The actual toll that we propose this year is in the table at the top of page 10 in section 2C. Let me just summarise each of the toll levels in that table. An authorised toll is actually in line with the RPI and a commitment in line with the Tunnels Act that says the toll should be set at that level based on the passing of the Act in 2004. The cash toll is actually 
the toll that's proposed for cash paying customers for 2019-20 from the 1st of April moving forward. And the fast tag tolls, there are two tables there. A proposed fast tag charge for Liverpool City region residents. And a new charge for this year, which I'll summarise in a bit more detail in a moment. And a fast tag charge for residents outside <coughs> of the city region. And just for clarity, both of those are for fast tag account customers who would pay their toll through the means of a fast tag through the plaza. The report summarises a range of further concessions, which again we've passed in previous years, but to summarise in <coughs> section 3.19, and there to allow the free passage for emergency service vehicles, the livery vehicles, and also for free travel on Christmas Day, actually, from 10pm from on Christmas Eve to 6am on Boxing Day morning. Some key messages really before us, I ask for questions in respect of the report. This year sees a further discount offered, which introduces a £1 fast tag charge for residents of the Liverpool City region who use Class 1 vehicles. It's a freeze on cash tolls for the year. And it, it's just a stress really for us, the volume of discount offered by the authority if these recommended or proposed tolls are accepted is estimated at around £15 million per annum when you consider those in line with the authorised tolls that we should actually be charging in line with the Act. So I'm happy to take any questions in respect of that. Any questions or comments that anyone makes? Uh, I'll ask Chris if he wants to say something further. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just got a few uh, bits and bobs. Uh, I've actually got about four questions, so I've asked them and then you can ask them in whichever order you like. Uh, looking at page 10 to start with, I uh, just want to check my understanding. Uh, so my, my understanding is that the current fast tag payment for class 1 is £1.20 uh, <coughs> and that the proposal is that the LCR <coughs> region residents would go to a pound and the non-LCR residents £1.80. That's correct. Okay. So I think there's maybe, I've got some concerns maybe that that's quite a big jump and what the effect of that, what we think the effect of that will be, whether that's likely to uh, cause people to consider going through other routes, maybe if you come back with something like that. Second question, page 11. Uh, this is about his, the historic debt. Um, basically, how, long we, how many years we think we're going to be uh, scheduled to, to pay that off. Um, Thirdly, just a technical explanation, please. When you mentioned about the authorised rate, I'm presuming that what we do is we calculate the authorised rate for this year, um, but we offer a slight discount. Then we, when we calculate for the following year, we calculate on the authorised rate again, not the discounted rate. That's fine. That's the difference now. Uh, I thought it would be, I just wanted to check. Uh, finally, um, it's around that one pound um, fast attack. Uh, I think it's a great suggestion. Uh, my concern would be uh, how that becomes cost neutral. Um, because if we have been charging people one pound twenty, and we're going to be charged a pound, then obviously that's a loss in revenue. Um, whether we think that's going to be covered by additional usage, or whether it's covered by the People not in LCR, but you know, the, the price going up to one pound eighty. Okay, so just each of those in order is, is probably best. In, in terms of the clauses, what we find from the studies, and it's very difficult to predict how, how people would behave, but what we found from our studies is, is the tunnel toll is actually just one of the small indicators which make people make the choice of the modal choices. There are other cross river opportunities at Messy Ferries, in bus or in rail opportunities. Uh, and and a, a, a big factor whether people choose to drive by car or other things such as fuel, such as car park prices or car park opportunities where they go to. So we won't realistically and scientifically be able to trace that through. But what we will say is actually the demographics of people generally will be able to afford a car, there won't be any major social impacts associated with the proposals. But nothing that scientifically point towards a study that says that. Uh, in terms of your second question, it's my understanding that the 
that is linked to the, to the Tunnels Act. And what the Tunnels Act actually says is that in, in the, when the, the debt is repaid and is proposed to be in 2048, then, then uh, an opportunity will arise for the residents of the city region to determine what should happen with the tolls moving forward. So there's an underlying statement that they still need to be funded from an operational and maintenance and upkeep perspective. Uh, in terms of RPI, just to clarify the point, because I, I, nodded, but I nodded in reference to, I, I get the question. Uh, so the, the Act actually makes reference to November 1999, that the, uh, uh, the RPI rate was late, or the toll rate was late. And in November each year, the RPI is used to calculate what that authorised toll level should be. And in determining the toll level moving forward, it's the <coughs> RPI. So in determining this year, it would be the RPI in 2018 that we utilise or consider as part of that discount as the authorised toll plan. In terms of the one pound fast tag and cost neutral, our assumption is that the reduction in, or the reduction in income that we will see uh, for the introduction of the one pound charge will be directly offset by the increase in income for the, the non Liverpool city region residents who will be paying that increased fast tag usage. And that assumes existing usage will continue as it is. Francis and Steve, Paul. Uh, first one is page 27, uh, 13.3. The revenue estimated income on proposed price increases but varies. Additional income allows Mersey Chapel to reduce. Uh, hold on, Francis, we're on the tunnel tolls. We're not, we're not on that report yet. Okay, not, not to worry. Steve? to Steve Rotherham. Steve Rotherham is one of the few politicians around at the moment who uh, made a manifesto pledge and, and <coughs> has delivered it. Um, and I think that restores some faith back in the political system uh, uh, and those, those politicians. It's a clear statement of intent in his manifesto and his uh, mayoral election. Um, and there was an accusation last year that he would, had achieved it by doing it in off peak it was somehow sleight of hand. Uh, well, this is not sleight of hand, this is actual genuine delivery of, of that promise. And a great many people on Merseyside and the city region will be um, absolutely jubilant about the uh, outcome of that. Um, the other thing is it, it puts to bed um, some of the accusations have been levelled at us that the tunnels is simply a cash cow and it will be bled and to tolls go up willy nilly uh, just to, to, to fund everything else we want to do. Well, that's clearly not the intent because this actually takes money uh, and puts it back into the uh, customer's pocket. Uh, the other thing is that we will always have to have some form of income to pay for the tunnels. The tunnels are a huge bit of assets technical kit uh, and need operational money and maintenance money and we never know what's around the corner with, with uh, capital proposals and so clearly income will need to be generated um, in, in, the, in the long term to, to make sure that the tunnels stay open uh, and are reliable. There will be perhaps you know comments about well when's it going to be toll free. It, it is in reality I think given the issues I've just mentioned it is unlikely in the foreseeable future that it will go toll free unless, and we've asked numerous occasions, the government to take it into the high wage network and pay for national taxation. And as of yet, we've never had a positive reply from the government. And obviously the, 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 the thorny uh, issue, obviously those outside uh, the Liverpool city region will not be best pleased, I guess. But the people of the city region and formerly Merseyside created the tunnels, built the tunnels and maintained the tunnels for this period of time and uh, surrounding areas have benefited from those decisions and <coughs> forefathers. So, forefathers. So um, we are here to represent the Liverpool city region as a bit of a clue on our banner there, that's who we represent. So I'm quite proud um, that we've delivered that. Um, clearly, there are other calls on the budget uh, 
which are demanding, which we go into the next set. But as the procedure works, we have to set the tunnel tells which feed into the, the budget setting process. So I think all in all, this was good news for the people of Merseyside, um, certainly those regular commuters, and there are thousands and thousands of those, uh, and I hope that resource that they now have at their disposal feed its, feeds its way back in to the city region economy uh, in other ways. So uh, my view is that this is a giant leap forward and delivers the manifesto pledge on behalf of Steve Rotherham, who I think is making a really good fist at the new role that he finds himself in. So I, I generally, and as a real representative, if you uh, look at your map, uh, everyone remember the rock band Deep Purple? Well, Whittle is Deep Purple, uh, so it will be a major benefit to Whittle residents, so quite happy to uh, support this uh, res resolution. Thank you, Chair. I was going to say, tunnels under the water, not smoke on top. Oh. There we go. Uh, I've got uh, Paul next, and then I've got Paul. Thanks, Chair. I actually have an amendment to move in relation to their recommendations at 2 on page 9. I'm not sure whether members uh, have a copy as yet, but we can, we can pass those round. But given the mathematics of this committee, it is perhaps unlikely I will secure a seconder, but nonetheless, if the government can perhaps read that. Uh, now, Chair, is that permissible? Yes, we can, we can do that accordingly. Um, you will need to secure a seconder if you're going to, to formally move it there. Absolutely. Uh, in relation to uh, item two, then, the recommendations, my amendment would add to the end of recommendation A and welcomes any reduction in tolls for residents of the city region. And then it would replace recommendation C with this committee expresses concern <coughs> that in its current form, the proposals would mean those who contribute to our public services and local economy who happen to live just outside the city region will have to pay more to get to work. It asks the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority to consider this before implementing the schedule of tolls contained in Table 1. And to the end of the recommendation, if we could add a D, the tolls on the Mersey Tunnels harms our local economy. This committee takes the opportunity to express its view that the Mersey Tunnels should be toll free and commits to work with all decision makers to achieve both the political will and resources to achieve this. I'd like to move that recommendation, but just by way of, of perhaps some commentary, Chair, um, I am concerned that the changes as proposed would be a significant increase to those who live outside the city region. For example, a nurse from Ellesmere, or perhaps who, who works in one of Liverpool's hospitals, or indeed a resident of Ellesmere Port, a teacher perhaps, who teaches in one of Rosley's secondary schools, they will be facing a significant increase in their cost to get to work. Excuse me, sorry, Councillor Hayes, you need a second before you start to debate. Sorry, I was busy touching out the documents. So, um, can we have a seconder, please, in respect to the first item of Councillor Hayes' amendment? Absolutely clear, clear, make sure that we uh, are now happy to move the recommendations of the interest. I think we need to, is there a seconder for this, seconder. this motion? Because whilst there's certain elements there that I have sympathy with, I wouldn't second that, and I don't know if other opposition groups would. Okay. On that case, that can't proceed forward. And I'm going to interject at this point um, because disappointed you've done this, Paul, but wouldn't surprise me to be honest with you, mate, because you've obviously tabled an amendment at the 11th hour. And if you were serious about getting a seconder, surely you would have approached all the different political groups to find that. Um, so effectively, what we're doing here is, is playing politics, aren't we? Uh, which is always a great shame. And quite frankly, I'm not going to be lectured by the Conservatives, certainly not on the cost of living. Jesus Christ, the sort who represents a world where people are literally, in my view, being persecuted by universal credit and genuinely, week in, week out, having to use food bags. I'm not prepared to kind of listen to any of that empty rhetoric. Equally as well, uh, there's a number of other points that I think need to be kind of dealt with. You, you, know, you, you kind of raised the point about those people outside uh, the city region. 
Um, one of the points I would mm. sort of echo is the point that Steve's made about how there's lots of very detailed things that we do do in this region that many, many people beyond the region benefit from. Some of the things I will list include the fact that we, the city region, are financing and investing in a brand new fleet of rolling stock on the Mersey Rail network that will significantly benefit some of these people uh, who live just over the boundary in Cheshire West. Secondarily, we've done some fantastic work with Cheshire West and the North Welsh authorities and played a really crucial role in getting a significantly improved set of services from the Welsh Labour government, I might add, with regard to the next Welsh rail franchise that genuinely will benefit our region and many, many people uh, just beyond the boundary as well. Equally, look at the stuff we've done on buses because of the fact we've done so much with regard to the, the bus alliance. And particularly the thing we should always hang our hat on uh, with regard to young persons' affordability, the fact that my ticket has been such a success, <laughs> Stagecoach have rolled it out into their operations in Cheshire and Lancashire. Another example of something that we pioneered, that people beyond the boundary are getting the benefit from. And the other final point that I'll make is I'm certainly not going to be lectured by the Tory party on the issue of all tolls. You know, some of us remember extremely clearly George Osborne, but particularly Philip Hammond, and I will uh, particularly point him out because he's now the Chancellor of the Exchequer, wandering round Wirral South when John Bell got trounced by Alison McGovern and like that, saying that a Tory government would deliver uh, decreases in the tolls and ultimately they would be free, and that was not dependent on electing Tory MPs on the Wirral. Now, I'm sorry, there's a Conservative government that have done absolutely nothing about fulfilling that manifesto pledge. So I'm not going to get lecture on any of these points. What I will say is, because you've started a process of playing politics with this that I'm sorry about, I'll move my own amendment, actually, in terms of adding to uh, point D, in which we will call upon the Conservative government to make good on its manifesto pledges of reducing tolls for city region residents and ultimately making it toll free. So I'm going to propose that if someone would second that accordingly and then we can add that to our recommendations accordingly. Do you need me to record that verbatim, Louise? Or? Okay. In addition to item D, that we call upon the Conservative government to make good on its manifesto pledges to reduce tolls for city region residents, aiming to make them free, and finance that entirely to enable that to happen. Excellent. So, yeah, you have got a right to reply. Thanks, Chair. I'm happy to support your amendment, in fact, because I'm not playing party politics. I don't think any political party comes to the issue of tunnel tolls with clean hands. The Mersey Tunnel Act that has been discussed in, in this meeting was something that happened under a Labour government. I don't think any government of whatever colour, as I say, has, has made significant advances in relation to the tunnel tolls. So as someone who believes that the tunnel tolls is an unfair tax, I will do anything I can to lobby whatever decision maker in order to hopefully achieve the aim of having the Mersey Tunnel Tolls toll free. So happy, in a spirit of cross-party consensus, to support your amendment, Chair. That's very much appreciated, and we will be looking forward to the Conservative government making good on that, because when it comes down to the issue of political trust, it's absolutely vital, as always. Genuinely, one of the things we should be proud of is we've got a Metro Mayor that's keeping his promises to the people of the city region. And all decisions are always challenging, but the fact that we are bringing forward that one pound fast tag as pledged by Steve shows absolutely this credibility on this side of the table. We look forward, in that case, Paul, to your side of the table meeting us on that deal. Okay. With all of that in mind, oh, Natalie, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, um, I'm quite pleased with Ms. Kelsey debate in terms of the tunnel. I never thought tunnel would. Um, such a vibrant discussion. But just to say um, thank you to the team um, as lead for Tunnel. This is something quite welcoming, and I'll echo what Steve already said in terms of Metro Mayor Steve making that pleasure, and, 
um, just to say um, we have to work together, obviously, to get um, it all free um, in the future. So thanks to all the team who worked on it. certainly can with that uh, amendment as uh, do we vote on the amendment according to Louise? Yeah. If we can first and foremost move to the vote on the amendment proposed by myself and seconded by Councillor Freel. All those in favour? Unanimous. Excellent. If that can uh, we then move to the substantive uh, recommendations. Is that agreed? Excellent. Okay, uh, moving on then to uh, item number five, which is the budget setting process. And uh, Sarah, I believe you're going to take us through this. Good job. Uh, uh, I was going to take us through it, and then uh, what Sarah might have uh, any questions members might have. Uh, is my microphone on the top way? Yeah. All right. There is something in the budget for you, microphones, if you need to Okay, the report as presented is intended to help the, the combined authority to establish its overall budget for 2019-20. Transport Committee um, assists the combined authority in this process by providing it with advice and recommendations with respect to its transport budget, which is only proper. The transport element of the combined authority's budget is by far and away the largest element. 93 million, uh, sorry, 93 percent of the 160 million pound budget, um, and that's even more if you include Mersey Rail. Uh, the CA will set, or it is recommended that the CA will set transport levies tomorrow that um, that will that will be frozen. Um, that transport levies payable by all of the local authorities, other than Halton, which will come to in a moment. Um, but in setting that levy, it has to be mindful of the requirements of Mersey travel and balance these financial requirements of Mersey travel with uh, all the considerations, particularly affordability on the part of the local authority. The budget before you assume to freeze in the transport levy as for a second consecutive year, following a period of significant, quite aggressive reductions in the transport levy. It means that the transport levy has either been reduced or frozen every year since 2010. And next year it will be at the same level as it was at 2002-2003. So overall there's been a really big reduction, 32 million um, over five years. And for our local authorities that's had a really significant impact. Freeze up resources for other critical services helps alleviate <laughs> some, not all, by any means, of the financial <coughs> pressures associated with austerity and the severity of, of, of cuts in central government funding in this region. And obviously the Transport Committee, members of the Transport Committee, the Chair of Wing and Finance, have all been instrumental in doing this in, in, in providing this level of reduction. It is part of a, a strategy, it has been part of a strategy. But while well, our income might be at the same level as it was in 2002, clearly our costs are nothing like they were. And that continues to present significant financial challenges, uh, which hopefully this budget before you attempts to address. Murphy Travel has been able to manage the reduction in its income through value for money, procurement, back office efficiencies today, but um, also hit with a significant reduction in rail funding, which is the budget. Um, the special rail grant that we get from the government um, is, now, is, no longer, it's, it's no longer sufficient for us to pay our contractual obligations to Mersey Rail. So with this reducing year on year, unless we can identify corresponding changes to concession, um, it becomes a hit for Mersey Travel. So far we've been able to manage it through our use of rail reserves, and uh, you know, to give you the idea of scale, that's £3.2 million this year, uh, next year, sorry. Um, we manage it through rail reserves, but that, that isn't a, a long-term solution. And there's also costs associated with that, because those reserves were intended, or are intended, for investment in the long-term rail strategy. <coughs> So there is a real cost to the organisation uh, through this loss of special rail grant and how we're having to manage it. It's exacerbated because uh, the timing is such that the rolling stock project is reaching its uh, uh, <coughs> conclusion, the business end of the project, and the commercial and operational changes that this will bring are uh, quite similar in the challenges that the 